Howdy, this is George from the Movie Cellar doing another night with Month of Horrors. I'm on my last movie, which was called The Belko Experiment, um, written by James Gunn, the guy that did the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Um, nothing like those, nothing like those at all, but written by him, um, or directed by him, I don't know, he's involved, uh, one of the actors from Guardians of the Galaxy is in there, the, the blue guy, um, Yandu, I don't, I don't fucking know, but you recognize him, there are several recognizable actors in this movie, um, which gave me a lot of hope, um, the, you know, the, the movie doesn't feel cheap at all, um, but it's an, it's an interestingly bad movie, it's, because it's not interesting, the plot, like, the, the story itself is shit, but, like, all the effects and stuff are great, I mean, I got nothing against the rest of the movie except the point of the movie, um, so I'll do a quick plot summary, uh, there's a building in the middle of fucking nowhere that's an office building for this Belco company. Um, I think they're in the Middle East. And they find jobs for Americans that need a job, I guess. So it's like a job agency type thing. Um, but it seems like wicked corporate, you know? Like a, I want to say they said it was like seven floor building in the middle of fucking nowhere, and there's guards, and they've got, like, RFID chips implanted in their necks, and it's all for their safety. Um, and then one day, shit's different. It's weird. Uh, that one day happens to be the one day that you're there. You don't have any real history on anyone. You just show up at the beginning of that day. Um, so... All the people that don't have the RFID chips in their head, or they don't say RFID, but the, the little locator chips in their head, all those people that don't have them get sent home. And then the building gets locked down, and there's 80 people inside. And a voice on the intercom says they got to start killing each other. They don't care how, they don't care who, they have to start killing each other, they got to kill two in like half an hour. Well, they don't. And so the bad guys blow up those chips in several people's heads. And everyone's like, oh no, someone's shooting. Because they don't, they don't realize they have bombs in their head. Um, so then after several of them, you know, have their head explode, decent gore and effects, like props for that. Um, after that happens, some of them are like, hey, we should start thinking about this, like killing each other thing. Maybe we should do that. So the voice says, now you got to kill 30 people in a couple of hours. And if you don't, I'm going to kill 60 people. And there was only 80 to start. Um, that's a lot of fucking killing. Um, so some people are like, yeah, let's kill people. And other people are like, no, don't kill people. And so it's like good versus bad, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then the only person that, like, not the only person, the main character that didn't want people to be killing people is the last one left alive. And then, like, the guards come and get him, and he plants bombs on them, and they blow up, and he kills everyone. And then you see on a, a monitor that this exact same experiment is happening in buildings all over the world at the exact same time with pretty much the same um, ending. And that's it. That's it. You don't really know why any of this is happening or how or who these people are. You don't have any characters that you feel for because you don't have any real history of them besides, like, you see a couple kiss and their boss walks in. They're like, oh, that's it. That's your history. Um, so you don't care about the characters at all. And you don't know any of their motivations going into it. Like, if you if you would know their motivations or their attitudes or whatever before the shit gets crazy, it would really make it pop. 
you know, because like the the very peaceful people you already know are very peaceful, because anyone's capable of anything. So when you have an expectation, I feel like it would pop more if they like went crazy. But that's not what this movie does. It's just like, oh, here's another person you've never seen before because there's 80 people in this building, and we're not following all of them. So here's this person. You don't know what they're going to do. It's just, I don't know. It didn't work for me. Um, so I didn't really like the movie. Because I didn't like the story. But like I said, the effects were good. Um, so I found myself enjoying watching the effects. Although, they got kind of tired. Because most of the people died with their head exploding. Or, like, a single gunshot wound. And that's most of it. I mean, yes, there was a Molotov cocktail, and there was an axe to the face, and there was the, you know, the cutter from, you know, like, the the big flat um, paper cutter with, like, the big fucking handle that comes down. Um, someone gets smacked with that. Uh, someone gets stabbed with, like, a big kitchen knife. Someone's head gets completely snapped around. Like, there are several other kills, but a lot of that stuff just happens really quick and and isn't a focus, but then, like, the head's exploding is a focus multiple times. So that just gets a little little old. Like, they didn't really do it differently. Um, Like, it happened several times throughout the movie. So if they had made, you know, at least one of those times made it a bigger deal... That would have been fun. Um, so, I'm going to give this movie a six. I mean, that's... I really didn't like the story. I'm, I'm going to give it a five. Because the story is pretty fucking important. So, I'm going to give it a five. Um, it's metal moment, I'm going to say, is... Um, man... I like the the in-house security guard. Um, he is so peaceful. Like, he just seems like such a genuinely nice guy. Um, there's, a, there's a scene where the boss, like the, the COO, I think, is like, hey, uh, give me the keys to where the guns are. And the security guard stops and thinks for a second. He's like, wait, what? Why do you need those keys? Because, you know, he doesn't want people to die. Um, And the boss is like, well, I want those guns so that I can protect them so that they're safe. And the security guard's like, he doesn't want to back down. He's like, you know, they're in a locked safe. I have the only key. If you take the guns out how are they safer? So no, I'm not giving you the key. And so the boss is like, mm, you will rue the day. You know, internally. Um, but that security guard just standing up, like, the boss even pulls the boss card and says, you know I'm your boss. And the security guard's like, mm, no, fuck, no, I quit. Now you're not my boss. You can't have the key. Like, he's serious. And that's the best part of the movie is that like this guy is courageous when needed. Um, I mean, it doesn't work out and he gets stabbed in the chest and dies and almost everyone dies. So it doesn't work out, but it was a really good thought. Um, disappointment though. I was really, really hoping that more things would get explained at the end of the movie And they they tried, I guess, a little bit to explain some of it. But, I mean, they just didn't do a good job. They didn't have enough to explain. There wasn't a story to follow. It was just following these people's heads exploding. So, the Belko experiment. Watch it if you want. But I'm not saying go watch it. I'm not recommending it. I'm not saying totally avoid it. You know, I've watched some bad movies this month. Um... And I definitely wouldn't put this in that category. 
But I've watched some fun movies this month, and I definitely wouldn't put it in that category either. So, yeah, right in the middle of the five. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the month of horrors. If you're not, I don't know why you're still fucking watching. Um, so thank you, and uh, happy Halloween. Bye.